Welcome, Mayor, Council, and Budget Committee. It's my pleasure to be here with you to share the Environmental Services Division budget with you virtually. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Matt Stouter. I serve as the Environmental Services Division Director, uh, and I also serve as the Metropolitan Wastewater Management Commission's Executive Officer. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with you. And I'd like to acknowledge before I get started, uh, Catherine Bishop in my office, who uh, did a lion, the lion's share of the work putting this presentation together. Uh, without her, I probably wouldn't be here right now, so I really appreciate her efforts. Uh, and then I'd like to walk you through quickly the agenda topics that I wanna share with you today. Um, so we'll do an overview of the Environmental Services Division. Then I'll move in and discuss the stormwater program uh, with you. And then I'll move on to the, uh, the Metropolitan Wastewater Management Commission and talk about the Regional Wastewater Program. Uh, and finish up finally with the, the Metropolitan Wastewater Commission's capital program. So you should see a chart on your screen here. This is our Environmental Services Division. Uh, there's 23 uh, full-time employees that work in environmental services. We really have five main work areas uh, that we work in. We have the stormwater group, what's called water resources. Uh, that's on the local side. And then we have budget, the budget finance and billing work group that serves both MWC and the city of Springfield. Uh, we have our communications work group that serves both uh, environmental services and MWC. And then we have our industrial pretreatment group, which works on the regional wastewater side. And then our capital planning uh, and policy group, pro capital project planning and policy group that works for MWC. Uh, the core responsibilities of our division really are um, the administrative functions for the Metropolitan Wastewater Management Commission, and I'll explain more on that later, uh, our stormwater program for the city, and then our industrial pretreatment program that works with our industry in town uh, on the regional wastewater program side of things. So this slide uh, shows a budget overview for Environmental Services Division by program. Uh, you'll note that the Regional Wastewater Administration component is by far the largest uh, for environmental services at nearly $3.7 million. Um, the table on the bottom shows uh, a little bit more detailed information for our budget. Uh, and you'll note that there's a net decrease uh, this year in personal services for the division and for materials and services for the division. Um, the other uh, pieces of, of the budget there, the indirects and the internal charges uh, and our utility billing and collection charges have increased this year, and those charges are outside of the control of um, our division. So moving into the, the stormwater program, a little bit about the stormwater program. Uh, the, the goals associated with this program really are to protect the, the water quality of our local waterways, the Willamette and Mackenzie Rivers, uh, and our local, local uh, waterways here in Springfield, as well as protecting citizens and property from flooding and complying with our, our state and federal requirements in the, the permit that we have that's been issued to the city of Springfield by the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, we also uh, look to provide regulatory certainty to the development community so that they know what to expect uh, in the realm of stormwater um, permitting requirements when they go to develop. And then lastly, uh, protect, uh, provide and protect for the recreational opportunities that um, people enjoy here in Springfield. We have um, about seven main focus areas um, in the stormwater program. Um, and these focus areas are really driven by the stormwater uh, discharge permit I referenced earlier that's been issued to Springfield by, by the DEQ. Um, the first one is our public education and outreach program. This program focuses on outreach to the public through public events, um, such as our, our upstream art uh, program, where we, we uh, you'll see the picture in the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, we, have, we have a call to artists every year and they provide storm drain art around town, uh, around the downtown that uh, has messaging to residents about why storm water is important and how it drains the streams um, and whatnot. And then we also have a program called Clean Water University that we, we coordinate with uh, in, in do in coordination with uh, MWMC, uh, whereby about six to seven hundred fifth grade students uh, learn every learn about stormwater and wastewater each year. Our illicit discharge program, now that's really a, a one person crew that um, responds to citizens com citizen complaints uh, across the community uh, with respect to illegal dumping when people put 
um, chemicals or paints or other things down the drain or into the stormwater system that they shouldn't. Um, we have a, a, a program that focuses on that. And then our construction site runoff and our post-construction site runoff programs um, are probably the lion's share of what we do in the, with the water resources group. Those, uh, those programs are focused on keeping pollutants from entering waterways that, um, from development. So uh, construction site runoff would be mitigation measures that we put in place uh, to control erosion as from development while development is being is being constructed. Uh, and the post-construction site runoff piece is um, a really our longer term um, best management practices or you know facilities that are put in place to protect water quality after development has occurred, things like stormwater ponds and swales. Uh, and we have a water quality facility and inspection program uh, that's associated with that. Um, a few other areas, we have a, our, our municipal separate storm sewer uh, permit administration program. And that really, um, there's gonna be more to come on this in the next slide, so I'll speak to that there. We have a total maximum of daily load plan, referred to as a TMDL plan, um, that highlights uh, pollution reduction requirements we must take to minimize bacteria, mercury, and temperature into the, the Willamette and McKenzie rivers. And then we uh, coordinate the user fee and the billing services program for the city of Springfield here. Um, the city of Springfield assesses stormwater drainage fees for all properties in town. Uh, and those fees really fund the uh, investments in our operating programs and our capital infrastructure. The user fees are reviewed annually um, and typically they increase uh, with at about inflation or a little bit less. This year, uh, per city council's direction, we're uh, moving to do a 0% increase um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and then our, our billing services program, uh, that really, we have a, a staff person that really provides support uh, for customers that have questions about their bill and helps them troubleshoot those, those things. So looking ahead, um, future year considerations for the next two to three years, um, our storm, stormwater permit that's issued to us by DEQ is really where we're focused right now. Um, the D Department of Environmental Quality issued uh, what's called a general permit to phase two cities across the state. Springfield is a phase two city. Uh, those are cities that are 100,000 population or smaller. Um, so we have, they issued that permit um, and Springfield is currently contesting that permit through litigation. Uh, several other cities of our size are also uh, contesting that permit with us. Uh, and so this is something that we're going to be tracking. The new permit um, contains requirements that are very stringent um, for new development and uh, likely not able to be met. Um, so, for instance, uh, new development would need to would need to take care of stormwater, not only treat their stormwater runoff offsite, but they'd have to mitigate for um, stormwater requirements on the offsite property, completely off the, develop, the development area. Um, they would also have to retain stormwater runoff on site. That's a mandatory requirement. Uh, and then there's quite a few um, requirements related to facility inspections. So um, what this means is that um, we're really going to have significant cost, uh, increased costs associated with a new permit when um, it is issued, when we do actually accept the permit. Uh, and this, these are these this is going to require additional resources across numerous program areas. Um, additionally, there's risk of being out of compliance with the permit if we can't meet it. Um, those are the things that we're trying to work through with DEQ. And if we're out of compliance with our permit, we risk uh, potential lawsuits. So that was a stormwater program. I'd like to transition and talk about the MWMC and the regional wastewater program. So this slide shows um, a little bit about the MWMC. The MWMC really is a partnership between Eugene, Springfield, and Lane County uh, to provide regional wastewater service for the metropolitan area. Uh, the, Metropo the MWMC serves has a service area of about 250,000 residents, uh, and it has a we have a seven-member commission. I'm speaking to you uh, now on behalf of the MWMC as the MWMC's executive officer. Uh, our commission is seven-member commission made up of representatives from Springfield, Eugene, and Lane County. We have three elected officials and four citizen uh, representatives. Um, Joe Pichonary is our Springfield City Councilor, who is the council representative to the MWMC for Springfield. Uh, currently, Pat Farr, Lane County Commissioner, is the commission's uh, president this year. Um, 
the MWMC, as I mentioned, is a partnership. Springfield is responsible for all the administrative components related to the MWMC, uh, and Eugene is responsible for the operation and maintenance uh, responsibilities for the MWMC. What, what Springfield, so what, what are the administrative components? Those are things like preparing the budget, administering the permit requirements, um, doing the planning for MWMC, uh, the capital project planning and delivery uh, for the MWMC and our communication program, uh, those types of things. Um, the MWMC serves both, both domestic and industrial users inside the urban growth boundaries for both communities, uh, and we serve mobile waste haulers from outside the urban growth boundary. Um, we have a total of about 96 staff in the regional wastewater program, and about 78 of those work for the city of Eugene. This slide shows, it might be kind of hard to see, but it shows a uh, regional infrastructure that the MWMC owns. Uh, I wanted to point out that we own about $450 million worth of assets, uh, and those are split up between our regional pump stations, our regional pipelines that carry flow from both communities, and then our regional water uh, pollution control facility or the wastewater treatment plant on River Avenue in Eugene, and our biosolids management facility also located in Eugene. This slide shows our regional treatment facility. It's located on River Avenue. Uh, average flow here is about 30 million gallons a day to this facility. It has capacity to treat about 277 million gallons per day, and it operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, if you think about it, basically all the wastewater uh, that's generated inside the urban growth boundaries from both communities ends up here. And in about 20, in about a 24 hour time period, it's cleaned and returned to the Willamette River. Our biosolids facility in Poplar Farm um, is located off of Aubrey Lane in Eugene, across from Fiddler's Green and Highway 99. Uh, it's about 600 acres that we own out here. Uh, biosolids are collected in four lagoons. They're, uh, this, these are the solids that come off of our anaerobic digesters. They're pumped out here uh, and they're, they're collected in lagoons, as I mentioned. They're, we apply our biosolids to the poplar farm, or to the, excuse me, to the poplar trees that we own. Um, and they're also applied to ryegrass fields. We have cooperative agreements with local farmers in the area to uh, apply some of the solids on their property as well. Um, out of the 600 acres, about 400 acres is planted in poplar. We have three management units that we that we manage, um, and these poplar are grown with the biosolids that we apply to them and some of the, and what we call recycled water that's cleaned water that comes from the wastewater treatment plant. Our trees are harvested on 12-year rotations, and then they're replanted, and the products are used locally for things such as uh, ceiling tile grills, um, wood chips, cardboard, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, MWMC holds an NPDES permit. It's uh, issued actually jointly to the MWMC and to the cities of Eugene and Springfield, and it's been on an administrative extension for some time now. Uh, in conversations with DEQ, we're on their permit renewal plan, and we expect that permit renewal uh, in 2021 or 2022, and we know that um, this is going to be a major driver in our future capital program. So I wanted to to show this slide just for the budget committee's reference to let them know about our uh, budget and ratification schedule. This budget, the MWC's budget, is a regional budget and it must be uh, ratified by all three governing bodies prior to going back to the commission for adoption. The schedule for ratification is shown here um, and will be out to the Springfield City Council on May 4th to start that process. Um, this slide shows a uh, summary of our regional operating budget. Um, I'd note here that there's a 1.3% increase in staffing this year. The city of Eugene has uh, proposed adding a 1.0 FTE for janitorial services. Um, on their side, uh, Springfield has a 0.22 FTE, put, uh, not add, but it's a, it's a to put back from a position that was split funded previously. Um, our personal costs have risen on the, this is the total regional program, 2.2%. Uh, uh, in the past year, which isn't bad considering 96 uh, FTEs when you consider uh, PERS and healthcare obligations, et cetera. Uh, and then what's really increased this year is our m and It's uh, went up by nearly 11%. And the reason for that is threefold. Uh, we've had, we've seen increasing chemical costs to treat um, for the chemicals needed for our treatment processes. And we've also budgeted um, a little bit more money this year, so quite a bit more money this year for 
additional utilities for electricity. And I'll explain more about that in the coming slide, but we have a, a renew, renewable natural gas project that we're excited about that we're gonna be bringing online that'll allow us to take our natural gas, sell it off at a premium, um, but it, the cost is gonna be that we need to buy more, um, more energy than we off the grid than we are currently. And we have additionally contributing to that, we've had some fleet operating charges that have, that have increased. And then our capital outlay, it fluctuates around every year. Those are one-time expenses. Um, this year, the $100,000, $122,000 there is a, a one-time expense for fall prevention at our pretreatment um, headworks facility um, to keep in, in order to keep worker safety. The area is um, an area where people can, can fall and we did have an injury there this year, so we're employing some measures to uh, um, to keep that from occurring in the future. I wanted to show uh, a five-year rate trend uh, for, for the regional wastewater uh, rates. So I'd note that each year the commission evaluates our rates, and their philosophy is to have small incremental rate increases over time. Um, like to be at a, as a pay-as-you-go utility to fully fund our capital investments with our own money and not need to take out additional debt. Um, we had proposed, a two, and the commission had proposed a 2% increase this year. Um, however, given the COVID-19 pandemic, um, at our last meeting, the commission elected to go forward with a 0% increase this year. Uh, so the rates remain level over last year. Um, and these, ra these rates are based on 5,000 gallons of wastewater treated in a month. I would note that the average Springfield customer uses about 4,300 gallons uh, a month. This slide shows a the adopted rates uh, looking back at last year in our uh, in comparison to some of our surrounding communities and competitors um, you'll note that um, Springfield's right below the average and Eugene's quite a bit below the average and uh, the reason for that is that uh, the, the blue the blue boxes represent um, the regional rate and they're the same across Eugene and Springfield the, the green bars are different um, the, local, the locals charge in Springfield for wastewater services more than in Eugene uh, chiefly because Springfield has had to take out bond, sell bonds in the past and has uh, debt service obligations where Eugene is not. So I wanted to uh, wrap up this, oh, actually, excuse me, I wanted to move into the, the capital budget now, talk about MWMC's capital budget. Um, this slide shows our, our five-year plan along with what's proposed for next year in fiscal 2021. Um, so we have it. We do have $24 million, approximately $24 million programmed in fiscal year 2021, and our five-year total is about $85 million. Uh, the majority of the projects you'll note are in plant performance improvements. Um, although we do have a significant amount of money in our equipment replacement um, uh, line item there, because um, we're, our plant is approaching 40 years old, and we're um, having to more aggressively replace some of our equipment as it ages out. I'll speak now to a few of the actual projects that we've completed and or are going to be working on in the next few years. Um, the first one is, a, is what we call the decommission uh, lagoon project. We had an on-site lagoon at the wastewater treatment plant uh, that needed to be decommissioned. It was used primarily for cleaning of the digesters. So the tailings from the digesters would come out here when we cleaned the digesters. Uh, with the addition of the fourth digester last year, um, this lagoon is no longer needed, and not only that, it was unlined, and it was a little bit of a, uh, a risk for a pollution. So it was it was programmed to be decommissioned, and it was it was decommissioned. Wildish was a contractor this year that did that construction. Um, it was it was a six million dollar project that we wrapped up. Um, also, we completed a resiliency planning effort, a resiliency planning study effort. Uh, this was really a consultant-led effort that looked at. Um, how the MWC would fare in a Cascadia subduction zone quake, um, as well as a very large flood. All the buildings that we had and the structures that we have on site, the treatment facility and our biosolids management facility were evaluated uh, and improvements were recommended through a, a disaster mitigation and recovery plan. Carryover projects that we have, um, one that we're really excited about, I mentioned earlier, is our renewable natural gas project. Uh, this project will allow the MWMC to basically fully utilize all the biogas that we create on site through our anaerobic digestion project process, uh, as well as eliminate flaring of gas to the atmosphere. You'll see that there's a picture there of a flare. Um, that's excess methane gas being burned off into the atmosphere. Um, so right now we have gas that that's uh, we take about half the gas that we create. We use it to power our facilities. 
uh, but we're going to be able to fully utilize all of our gas with this project. Uh, the gas will be injected into the pipeline as vehicle grade gas uh, and will be it will provide us with an additional revenue source that will benefit our ratepayers. Um, and we expect that construction on this project is going to begin in 2021. Uh, we also have a money program for a comprehensive facility plan update, and that's going to be an evaluation of our facilities and what's needed uh, as a result of the, the new wastewater permit that we expect to get from DEQ. Um, a couple of new projects that are on, coming on board. We have an aeration basin project. The aeration basins are shown there. This is our part of our secondary treatment process. Uh, Right, this is a $10 million project that's going to be split out over two phases. The first phase is going to be constructing, is going to be starting next year, is about $2 million. And this is really going to be focusing on energy improvements for the blowers on site and the diffuser equipment associated with our, our aeration basins. And then we're looking to make some upgrades to our administration and operations building. This is a 40 year old building that um, is was recommended as the number one priority. Uh, to be updated with respect to our resiliency planning efforts where it's, this is our where our operations console is housed and where our operators and, and technical staff work it's uh the area that needs to be um will need to be used first and foremost in the result of a cascadia zone quake um, and allow us to control our facilities so we're going to be uh, looking at some upgrades to this project as well next year the last two projects i wanted to speak to are uh, the Glenwood Pump Station, we're looking to do some upgrades there to accommodate future growth in the communities of Eugene and Springfield, as well as to meet redundancy requirements uh, for associated with uh, DEQ uh, design requirements. This is about a $2 million project. And then we have some uh, follow-up money program for our resiliency project, which is basically to do some planning, further planning study of some of our critical, inter uh, critical, critical infrastructure um, like our Owasso Bridge across the Willamette River and the Glenwood Pump Station that you see there. So with that, um, that will conclude my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'm going to be available during the budget committee process for uh, to answer those questions. Um, and I hope I hope to see you soon. Um, thank you.